I always usually feel awkward about these things and that's okay but because like I get awkward and I think everybody loves awkward but <laughs> the point of today's video you like my hair I fixed it <laughs> um, but anyways um, so yes and I changed the background you know so I'm from Canada hello 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 a um, gassiness is something that I've kind of had to deal with most of my life <laughs> and it's just part of the body I suppose but I wanted to kind of tie it directly of course to uh, astrology and with the new moon in Aquarius because you know air something to do with gas <laughs> it's gonna be a funny post but I think it's uh, I don't know we'll see how it goes I like to kind of just go on the whim and just you know um I do have like I'm gonna take a look at my notes that I've had like I have I have this cheat sheet that I have with astrology because you know you can't remember everything and that's totally fine I recommend actually doing that where you you know, you just kind of take notes on what you find. And for me, I get very, very, like, I, would, I don't know if you want to say detail-oriented. Oh, my zipper's open. Um, <laughs> uh, TMI. But, um, yeah, like, for example, I've taken notes on, like, general notes that I've seen online. The number, you, you know, when you go on astro.com and all those things. And plus, it's, like, um, I looked at Philip Sedra's stuff, he, he talks about associations. I go, oh, okay, that makes sense. He has a positive and negative. But I don't always do that. I just kind of took his notes and copied it. Um, but I did my own analysis through the myth and through the astronom astronomical data. So I thought, oh, okay, cool. And I even put numerology in there. And it's like, I thought the numbers literally coincide with the interpretation of the numbers, coincide directly with the interpretation astrologically and also like my own interpretations of it. It all ties in and it's like, oh, it's amazing. So anyways, um, first of all, gassiness. What is gassiness? I was looking into it and I was just like, what causes gassiness? <laughs> and apparently it's, um, I'm gonna share what I texted my friend about it because she's into medical astrology. And what did I see here? Oh, was it that? I don't remember what it was. No, something else. Anyways, that's no, that was about something else. But it is something about the, yes, it's the abdomen. And I realized, oh, where do I have Virgo? If you do a medical astrology, it's Virgo is the sign for um, the, the abdomen area, the stomach. I believe it is also digestive system. If we look into my cheat book here, I'm going to look into Virgo, just abdomen, intestines, central nervous system. Mm, makes sense, right? Nervousness, I get it. So I have that as well. Like when, when with nervousness that comes through with my, you know, my placement. I have nervousness. Digestive enzymes, diaphragm, but it's also Libra. Nope. Mm, nope. Do I have Virgo? I'm Virgo placement. I'm Venus and Virgo in my second house. So self worth. So like that whole like value your self esteem. And then I have it square, Neptune and Sagittarius. Sciatic nerve, hips and thighs, pituitary gland. Isn't that somewhere here? Oh, I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know much about medical stuff. Not even like medical astrology, but it's interesting. So I thought I'd do that. But anyways, it is um, related to Virgo. So that makes sense because Venus rules, uh, still rules, of course, uh, Libra. And that totally makes sense, right? I was going to go into like Aries as well because I believe Aries and Aries is, Aries is for me, it's, it's, a, it's the modern ruler of Libra totally fits. If you do a lot of research on Eris or Eris, um, yeah, totally fits in. So, but it's my, Eris is, has been for many, most of us, it's in Aries. 
It's also to do with something to do with like here, up here, right? So head and face, adrenal and suprarenal glands. I'm going to just okay, so headaches might be part of that, but there's something else. Oh, okay, so inflammation. That makes sense. That kind of ties in with the gas as well. When I don't, when I'm like, I feel like I'm not myself. When I'm in my, when I'm real my, myself, like I, like doing this right now, I feel like I'm, I'm less gassy. Oh, and also becoming vegan. Even though the beans still give me gas, but it's not like when I'm nervous gassiness. You know, when I used to hold things in, when I was like, digestive system was kind of like, you know, and it was, um, speaking of gassiness, as far as it sounds, it's, um, no, I used to have meat, at least for my body, you know, and I'm not promoting that you go vegan or vegetarian. It's not that. It's that you listen to your body. But for me, it made more sense. So I thought, okay, so I cut out meat because I noticed I was also getting gout. And I don't know where that is. Gout is like with the feet. So feet is Pisces. <laughs> Look at that. It says gout. <laughs> so the feet circulatory system. Yes, whenever I'm not either not exercising or not light as you know when you when it's when it's it's heavy when it's like you know i looked it up i looked it up actually what causes gas and one of them is when we're chewing things quick when we're chewing things too fast and it's like so you're not pre-digesting it in other words through your mouth you're not you know that thing and you're letting the, the, the body do all the work and that's how it feels heavy it creates more gas it's kind of the same effect as like when you're chewing too much. It's right? just like you're creating a lot of air, you're pumping it. So it's air, it's air related. Um, but Virgo is pre-air, so to speak, it's earth, right? And that makes sense why it is totally associated with that. But Virgo, what that means from well, the way I understand it now, it's like, oh, it takes time to digest. But in order to have time to digest, you have to help it. You know, it is a mutable sign, that makes sense. You have to help it. And I find out with mutable signs, they need some kind of like precursor, so to speak. Like you got the initiative signs and you got the fixed signs and all those things. But you get the point. It's like going from the initiative to like the, what do you call them? Um, the leadership, <laughs> sorry. And fixed sign, mutable, and then um, you know what I'm talking about. So the point is that it's going, okay? so, and that totally makes sense. Um, so, yeah, so but when I do chew my food, when I do take time, I don't get all, like if I talk too fast as well, that's probably it, or myself where this, it, it is affected. I don't know if that has something to do with that. Hmm. Does it? Like if I get nervous and like in terms of like the trust issues thing, because I'm Mercury is, my Mercury is in Scorpio and Mercury rules Virgo. So that affects my Venus placement. Wondering about that one, I'm not really sure. But Mercury or, or Scorpio is down there. What is that one here? Genitals, male reproductive organs, bladder, urethra, rectum. I'm not sure about that one. I don't know how that goes. I don't know how, I, I'm not sure. But the point is today's topic was about gassiness and the air stuff. And I want to kind of tie this into seeing how I can sort of introduce medical stuff into um, today's reading. And I thought it was interesting because I'm just gonna focus on the moon as much as I can because I don't wanna go di digressing into like the whole chart, it's weird. Because I like to include the, uh, the asteroids. Um, I like to include, you know, more detailed stuff that I think are pertinent to the moon. Okay, so going to this one. Okay, we got the moon. I love this. I love the fact that when I saw this, it was like looking at Pam Gregory's, like the chart she drew up. I was like, oh, it's almost an exact, exact like placement. You can see that right there, 20 degrees. And I was like, oh, cool. So you guys, it's already started yesterday. I know this is a post that's late, whatever. <laughs> 
but it still applies. Mm. Moon, okay, so the moon in, okay, obviously we know that the moon is about the people, it's about, and the Saturn, uh, so the sun is government, head, or any, any kind of leadership position, any person that you deal with, and the people. So there will be sort of this getting along sort of thing with new ideas and new innovations in Aquarius, right? I'm go we're going to ignore the houses, of course. This doesn't apply to you guys. Um, and so it's like, okay, great. But medically speaking, it's an error because we're talking about Aquarius. So Aquarius, as we know, is, well, Aquarius is Aquarius. So it rules the shins, ankles, circular torso, some pineal gland. Oh, it's right down there, the third eye. Circular system, shins and ankles. So people might find, I don't know, how the moon behaves there. I don't really know what about, much about it, but from what I've seen so far, if it's got to do with the moon, which is people and the sun, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna really cheat here, and I'm going to my astro chit 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 chit. Yes, I'm totally like going out right now. <laughs> Just like, okay, here we go. So the sun actually rules the heart, upper back, right eye from right eye right here. Men, women, meaning like men, women doesn't matter. Men, women, okay. Um, cardiovascular system, heart, pericardium, okay, so back spine, thymus, life force. Going into Aquarius, I feel like that's um, something to do with when we're not listening to our hearts. When it's because it's the governing, you know, if you look at the heart, it is actually has a really huge magnetic field and way bigger, like it's expansive, right? Way bigger than the brain. Okay, so when we follow our heart, everything kind of comes through. Um, it does also tie into fever as well, that makes sense. Feverish complaints, life force. Um, so from here down to the back, and it's like the line, like the life force. It's chi, right? So your heart. You know that song? I forgot who said, listen to your heart when she's when he's calling for you, whatever. Okay? Um, so yeah, anything to do with the heart. And it explains why if that's going with that and tying that into the circular torso. I, I don't know, I'm probably butchering this whole thing, but there's something to do with, something to do with that. Or, um, I don't know. So watch out for that. But because it is the heart, Um, listening to your heart, when <laughs> the song comes to me. Listening to your heart with how you are as an individual, but also how you work into your, your own governance, your own sovereignty, right? Working with that. For me personally, in Aquarius, it means like being open to experimentations, being okay with like new knowledge. Um, and of course, the shadow behind that is like neglecting emotions. Right, it's getting a little too technical and getting a little too probably also, you know, it's like it must be this way. Is it a fixed sign? All right, cardinal that's the word, <laughs> and it came to me just now. So, um, it, it's really going to affect us, you know. So, when you work with anyone who's in leadership position, you know, it also goes with certain places, you know, being an Aquarius, go to places that are magnificent, go to places where there's a lot of like any sort of ostentatious feel to it since the magnanimous feel royalty right um now going into mundane stuff but that's that this ties into the heart i believe so so when you're talking about um that kind of stuff you also want to look at um places so aquarius uh if you're traveling um, places like apparently it says here Poland, Croatia, Scandinavia. This is my, this ties into my past. <laughs> I think this is my south node. But Russia, um, maybe not Russia, but Siberia, okay. 
North America, especially Los Angeles. So anywhere where there's um, uneven places, hilly places, the hippie trail says here. Uh, minerals are extracted where minerals are extracted. Okay, so if you like minerals and crystals, great. Uh, vineyards, wells, okay, hanging out at wells, like Jack and Jill, right? Recently cultivated ground, springs and conduits, surgeries and lecture. Mm, I wouldn't hang out on that. <laughs> Anywhere where there's springs and conduits, minerals, okay, so mineral, I like that mineral stuff. Um, Machinery, if you like to techy techy stuff. Uh, uneven places, of course, you like, if you like hiking, if you're one of those kind of people, you know, like going out. Yes, that's very Aquarius. Ties into the moon as well, which is, I believe, the breast area right here, the chest, right? Stomach, also digestion. It is a digestion as well, so it ties into... Oh, okay, that makes sense. I have moon in Aquarius. <laughs> um, okay, so digestion. Um... I don't know how the sun, the, the planets, and the signs like are linked in medical astrology. I, I, I'm not sure. But the way I see it is it's something to do with the people because it is the moon. Um, but also your like, your lymphatic system. Okay. Being okay with governing yourself. Being okay with being your own self. Being okay with independence, your own freedom, your own... Um, what do you call this? Yeah, but also with people learning to go with people, you know. So here the moon is kind of a little bit more elevated because it's not like the sun where it's a lot more governance and your self and your sovereignty, but it's also, it's both. So it's both, the, you know, we are going through the age of Aquarius, but at the same time where the sun is concerned, it's really about that. So being yourself among people. So finding your own tribe, as, you know, Pam Gregory, Pam Gregory actually said this, and I was like, okay, that totally, that totally makes sense. So do you get what I'm saying? So I hope you do. So really being yourself and everything comes along with that and then going finding your own tribe finding your own communities go with people that resonate really with you now I want to kind of see where Orcus is right now with this one because Orcus is about integrity and when I find it integrity is important let's go back Oh, okay. Mm -mm. It's not being affected by it. Okay, that's fine. Ah, oh, okay. There we go. It's trying to... Both moon and, sun, moon and Sun are trying to Vesta. And this is what I described. I did my own research. Okay. Anyways, pardon me. <laughs> So Vesta is devotion, and but uh, something I discovered about Vesta, I started feeling it yesterday, and I noticed that if, with Vesta, Vesta is that part of us that goes, um, what is it? It's it's not just your inner fire, it's not just your, it's not just virginity and all the sanctity and sacred stuff. Okay, but it's also like, it's your life force. It ties into the sun, right? And it totally makes sense. It's life force energy. The sun is life force, but the energy that comes from it, from the fire itself, it's like you're taking a piece of the sun and going, this is the life force. It's going to source, but this is right here. It's just, so it's almost like you're, it's part of your, it is like a chi, it's chi, or maybe it is chi and the sun is the source of that chi. I feel like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because I did write down here, like I added this yesterday. I was like, okay, there's something about Vesta that's not making sense right now. There's <laughs> something else. Because I looked into it, the mythology, and you know, she's about standing, your, Vesta is about standing your ground. It comes from the Latin vistando. From, from, this is from Wikipedia, right? Staying committed to devoted in your own divine power. There's another one here from Greek, apparently. Hestane, whatever, how do you pronounce that? Dia, dia pantos. Pantos? Okay. Standing forever. So it makes inextinguishability. Right? You have to keep that 
fire burning. This is Vesta, right? So a lot of it is definitely like, yes, it's servitude, but servitude doesn't happen. You don't get to help people unless you, you help yourself first. It doesn't work that way. It's like an empty vessel. It's like this water bottle, right? You can't pour water out of it and pee people. You can't be, you know, uh, or, you know, quenching your thirst if there's no water in it. You have to replenish. So Vesta has a lot to do also with that whole like keeping that, replenishing that fire. And I'm actually going to put that here. Um, okay. So, and also creating boundaries. I looked at the astronomical data here. Um, or is it still the myth? Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, so she, she apparently also represents the, you know when you have the threshold, you know when you go to a temple, there's a thing at the door and at the bottom, you have to cross over it, so it's respecting that boundary. That's Vesta, so having that boundary and saying, okay, here is my time to process things. This is why it ties into the 30 years that virgins, the Vestal virgins have to take. It's preservation, and then you can be of service. It kind of really ties into the sun as well, particularly like Leo, because I mean, I do have it in Leo, so there's something about it. But it's also, it's like Leo or Virgo. It ties into that. You know, you cannot be of service. You cannot be helping others if you're an empty vessel. That doesn't make sense, right? So self-respect, preservation, and this comes with maturity, patience, fortitude, steadfastness, right? So you have to keep the fire burning, right? Um, it's also where you create your foundations. Romulus and Remus were, uh, or she's, she was, there was a handmaid that gave birth to Romulus and Remus. Or well, basically she's, in a way you can see, not slave, but handmaid, like a servant. It was like a vestal virgin, I believe. Um, but she, uh, she was protected by Vesta. That was part of the myth. But that makes sense because it's source, right? It's, you cannot grow out of something if you don't have that. But you get the point, okay? It's also fortitude, which is like the donkey, that's why I should. Anyway, so I'm digressing. So, um, medically speaking, let's give it a try. So it's something to do with... The anterior cingulate gyrus. <laughs> I forgot it was. Something to do with purity. Something to do with, I don't know what that is. Okay. Mm. Actually, you know what? I'm going to look it up right now. Sit. What is it? Sit. I'm going to copy and paste that one. This anterior cingulate gyrus is... So it's under the anterior cingulate cortex. And what does it do? Is the frontal part of the cingulate, the frontal part of the cingulate cortex that resembles a collar surrounding the frontal part of the corpus callosum. So it's oh attention, such as attention, allocation, higher level function, impulse control, decision making, reward, anticipation, and emotion ties into Vesta, right? Because it's fire, it's um, inner fire, it's dealing with that whole like. Patience, right? Decision making, so impulse control, fucking make sense. I love when these things happen. It's like you do like these little bits of discovery and bits and pieces, and it just it's all it, there's it's it's all connected. Thank you. So I'm thanking because I did um, I do listen in. I try to really not only intuit it, but it's I see what happens naturally, and I feel through it. Okay. Represented by number four, that's some numerology stuff, but we're not here for numerology, but four is a numerological number that ties in with Vesta. So, woodwork, virginity, hearts, fireplaces, heating, central uh, temples with a central fire, that's his mundane stuff. Uh, labor work, especially of love, pure sexual energy, sexuality, unadulterated energy, I would say, dildos, okay, purifying agents. So phallic symbols or phalluses. Um, so maybe not necessarily dildos. 
But yeah, it is sexual energy. Cleansing, cleansing agents. <laughs> this is interesting. Cleansing agents. So, um, something to do with purity, right? Baking bread as well. Okay, if you're into donkeys as well, that's also part of it as well. So, I don't know what it is. Probably people might be more drawn to these kind of purification stuff. Um, good thing it's not retrograde. It's like, I was like, I hope it's not retrograde because I, I have to go deep into it. Not that I don't like retrogrades. I love retrogrades actually. But, so it's trying to moon and sun. So that means it's like about purification or finding your pure self, finding your chi, finding your life force and staying with that and going with it and building your community and finding people that work with you, finding people to experiment with, people who are have the same ideas. Quirkiness, this is Aquarius. Quirkiness, weird, unusual, the positive side of eccentricity, which is like going out and beyond, you know, going and just being, yeah, it just, you know, so maybe, I find that it ties in with the shins and ankles. So I feel like maybe running buddies? I don't know. I feel like there's something to something to do with that. I don't know. Give it a try. Experiment. I do you just see the view that Vesta does also uh, here. Vesta is a square aspect to Juno. Um, that in turn will affect Vesta because um, Juno in retrograde Juno is about commitment. Let's see if I finished my research on Juno. So it's about loyalty, commitment. I didn't. Okay. So I don't know where it is yet, uh, medically speaking, uh, or medically, medical astrologically speaking, but her number is, is three, if that means anything to you guys. But we're not here again for numerology. Uh, remember that when I post things, it's always about the discoveries, you know. It's just, it's going to be like incomplete. But that's the fun part of it. It's okay not knowing. So I'll work on Juno next time. <laughs> when I get to. But yes, something to do with loyalty and commitment and really like honoring that. And because it's in retrograde, it's like an inner honoring of yourself. It is conjunct to Orcus, so being completely honest with what you want. It's in Virgo, so it's about your health. It's about, oh, yes, your abdomen area, this area, digestive or area, what was it again? Mm -hmm. Digestive enzymes, diaphragm, okay. Intestine, spleen, nervous system. Working with our nervousness and working with like so don't just go out there just because you have the inner fight. It's time to kind of work inside, work internally. And you know, this has been going on for since the beginning of the pandemic, and that's okay. But working with what is truly healthy for you. When I say truly healthy, it's not up here. <coughs> it's here, right? Um, you can also bring in also knowledge using that knowledge. It is ruled by Mercury, <coughs> but it also rules by Vest. It, Vesta coincides with Virgo and also Chiron, so healing, a lot of healing with your own loyalty to yourself, um, you know, conserving that energy, making sure that it's like, okay, it's not something that is something you just give over, especially sexually speaking, right? This is the time for be honest, if you practice sexual transmutation, awesome. It's like fasting for sex. But it's not about, I'm not going to have sex ever. But it's nothing to do with that. It's to do with, from my experience, it's really like, it's really revitalizing, but it's like auto revitalizing. I don't know if that makes sense. But um, yeah. So what I'm also going to do here is, um, I'm going to see what ties in with the cards, but actually before I do that, I want to finish this one. What else do we have here? Moon, moon square, Uranus, okay, that makes sense, which is actually ruling it as well. So that means that um, it's not in retrograde anymore. Yes, so Uranus is coming out of its shell and it wants to be eccentric, it wants to be different, it wants to be innovative, with new ideas. Uh, electricity is flowing a lot better now. 
but it is going to be unexpected changes. So it's not going to affect the homes as much, meaning like it is a square, so that means there's going to be some challenges with you know weirdness and people that you come across in communities that you're with. That's fine. Embrace the eccentric, eccentric embrace the weirdness. When I say weird, for Americans, I would say this is totally okay. But there are cultures out there, people who will come to, or not just not just a culture, but individual, individually speaking as well. There are people and cultures, and so collective and individuals, that are not okay with that weirdness. They're kind of like it's unstable. Well, you have to surrender to it. Come take it from me. I'm very familiar with both Plutonian and Uranian energies. It's very strong in my chart. I mean, besides the chart, the whole thing is, yeah, working with that energy. So, go with that. Um, but with Uranus, I don't, I don't want to change the page here. It's so, Uranus rules, still nervous system, so it ties into nervous system still. Right, the pineal gland, so it ties in with Aquarius. Right, in Taurus, it's about I kind of jumped into the whole because it, if I feel like the sun is tied to this because it's going to places not necessarily if you are traveling but like where the heart is for me it's like the sun is important there it could be just food as well apples spinach beetroot wheat and other cereals grapes pears asparagus artichokes plantains so root vegetables very deep right very root vegetables but also um high uh, what do you call that like chewy stuff what do you call that fiber <laughs> high fiber diet or high fiber foods um, and also root vegetables so that's very high so that would be like go with that enjoy the food that you enjoy don't go for the unhealthy stuff you know you want to be healthy and pleasure you know for to have pleasure which is Taurus it has to be real right if you look at the chart again I bet you huh, right there yes Tor Orcus is reminding you to look inward and see what is it that you're looking for what is it that you that will help your nervous system now I'm starting to get it okay so you never for your nervous system to be healthy go with those I'm not saying this is the all and all be all sort of thing this is not that but listen to your body but what it says here is that it is your nervous system you know to embrace to really embrace that pineal gland functions to really you know, be more in touch with your intuition and higher elevation and downloads and all that stuff. Really go with that. Foods that are healthier. So definitely high fiber. And it's going to give you gas. That's totally fine. Go with that. <laughs> Fart the fuck away with all that <laughs> unhealthy stuff, right? It's okay to indulge in certain things that are so-called unhealthy. I'm not saying don't eat it. I'm just saying be healthier because we want to be lighter as well. And at least that's what I'm discovering for myself. Um, so places that you're going to, if you are going to a new place, I am. Uh, one of the things that sticks out for me is the Greek islands. If you're already there, great. Germany is here in Leipzig. If you're going to Leipzig, um, uh, Italy, Mantua, Parma, and Palermo. North America, St. Louis. So luxurious places, comfortable luxurious places, excellent food, gently rolling countries. So again, with the food thing, nothing to do with don't eat this. Make sure it's like, okay, so high fiber and root has more root vegetables. So if you're going to eat pasta, don't go for white flour based stuff. Go for like whole wheat stuff, whole grain pasta. Because you can always substitute, right? Stable cedar uh, cellars and low rooms, furniture shops and markets. Okay, so if you like antiquing, which is a more of a cancer thing, but furniture shops, that's totally fine. Country, I like gently rolling countryside. So you don't have to go anywhere. You can be in the countryside. You can go travel to whatever it is, the countryside area, right? So a flat area. Here where I live in Alberta, it is gently, there are country areas where it's like flat. So, yeah. Tuscany, it's kind of like that. So if you're in Italy, great. 
Cyprus is part of this one, Iran is part of this one, Switzerland, Turkey, Ireland, especially Dublin. Uh, that's also because of the comfort and luxuriousness, right? Luxury hotels. Um, go with that. So pamper yourself. That's a bit of a Taurus thing as well here. Um, but because Taurus, in this case, rules... Where's Taurus? Taurus, I believe, is up to... Ah, sorry, it's ears. So with the nervous system here, we're talking about Uranus in nervous system, right? With the nervous system. But also ties in with um, the throat vocal cords. So being able to express what you're nervous about. So being honest with that and being integral. You know, going back into that. And that'll affect Orcus and Virgo. Virgo and Juno, Juno here, Orcus. It's the abdominal, abdom, abdomen area, abdominal area. So you won't get gassy in this case. So <laughs> ties back into the gassy stuff. So I hope you caught that. Rewind the video. You know what, I'm t you know what to do. Okay? Okay, what else do we have here? Let's take a look at what else. So Uranus rules both Sun and Moon. So it, it, because Sun and Moon type, but we're, we are focusing on Moon, but because Sun is there, we're already going to we're going to include the Sun there. Of course, it's the heart. When he's calling for you. Hmm, uh, the fixed star there. I don't know what to do with the fixed star. I was going to do some research on it. Let's take a look. You know what? I'm going to do a bit of research here. What did I put here? Cas Castra. Castra is currently in Aquarius, or still in Aquarius. Okay. Nature of Jupiter. Ah, okay. Great. Okay. It's located tail of the sea goat, sea goat. Noonan says Robson Malevan interpretation wrong is wrong. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 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 The belly of Mars Mercury. Okay, so based on true spectra of uh, Castra, let's just skip that little part. Sorry, Castra gives apparently the fondness for power, great authority, the ability to command. Martial honors, kingly preferment, victory over enemies, liberality, and cosmopolitan views. High honors, wealth, and renown are possible. It also gives a higher spiritual nature, but few can respond. The star's variability dilutes this positive nature by adding loquacious, changeable, rash, and headstrong. Yellow, orange stars, but this imports native to public preferment, name, fame. Good or bad leadership ability. Okay. So with the um, fixed star, when it comes to fixed stars, you don't want to necessarily believe what they say about it, whether it's positive or negative. Um, and this makes sense because fixed stars aren't literal. At least what they say from Ptolemy's time in the past. Okay. So according to this book uh, that I'm using, which it's very, very comforting, but at the same time, it's true. So basically, so if it says, like they say, someone's going to be dying of strangulation, it's not going to. It just means there's going to be some sort of limitation, right? And that's okay. It means that it's time to wait. Or if it's the positive, right? So for example, this here talks about the Pleiades, Weeping Sisters. Um, apparently it's involved with violence, blindness, and accidents. Okay. It adds additional confirmation or additional inf or in information. So I find that when it comes to um, taking with yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, um, it kind of like will feel like a part of that prediction, that interpretation that they gave in they gave in the ancient times. So if it's, for example, like okay, it says here Beetlejuice, Spica, and Arturus. Promise honors, riches, fame, inspiration, but this is exaggerated, right? 
may not may, may not be like you know popular and all those things, or maybe not have like a lot of riches or not be like a millionaire. But when it comes to certain things, like they don't, let's say if it's an accident, they, they come out, he says here, unscathed, unharmed from difficult situations or hardships. So if it's, so in other words, just because it says like here, and I'm looking at it right now, you can't see the page. It says good or bad. Leadership, a, a chronic difficult to diagnose, possibly serious illness, violence and self-destruction. It just could mean what is the another aspect of that? And for me, at least, the way I see it is it's not self-destruction. It means like processing, self-processing, being away from, you know, like kind of creating maybe some sort of anger, experiencing sort of anger. It's really up to you, right? We do have free will. So take it with a grain of salt and say, okay, that's not exactly what it means. It's not to be taken literal. Okay. What else do we have here? So that's Castra. Um, it's in the constellation of Capricornus. Okay, that makes sense because it is, you can see it as like some sort of limitation. That's totally fine. Um, but it, 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 it will tie into the current energy, so the moon and the sun. It does make sense because that means that um, it'll feel on and off. First, you'll have, did you notice what I mentioned when I read this part in, from Fixed, uh, fixed Astrology King's website. When I think they were just copying notes from uh, historical documents or from Ptolemy's time or whoever described or interpreted Castro, any of the fixed stars. But it's like, it's, 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 one says authority, so one says ability, and but then the other one says like rash, headstrong. So it's like, it's kind of like that whole feel of Aquarius is unstable. Right, one's going this way, one one's going that way. So it ties in with the whole instability thing or feeling of like sort of like mm, very high energy or maybe not necessarily high energy, maybe fixed because it's fixed is kind of like um, you know, research and doing balance balancing things by looking at the research and looking at the science behind it. So again, take everything with a grain of salt. Even with astro astrological charts today, you take it with a grain of salt. Okay, there's nothing there. Let's look at, oh, Icarus right here. Ah, okay. Ah, okay, foolishness that they say here uh, is based on what I've researched. I'm gonna go into my notes here. What is it about Icarus risk? So risk taking, okay, premature unhealthy choices, all those things. Um, there's also a bit of resentment probably involved in this one because it's like you want to just go for it, you know. You want, but it's you can you have to process what your freedom is, right? So just because that's what it says here on this chart doesn't mean that it's going to go there. Um, so I wrote several notes for myself based on how I interpreted the. And the myth, so potential resentment, undeserved punishment, being yourself but imposed to limitations, childlikeness, of course, is there, faith, trust, self belief, okay. ego, mm -hmm. honoring self assuredness, confidence, standing up for your belief. Ties a lot in with Vesta, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. Um, Blamelessness, crossfire, victimhood, okay, playing the victim. Watch out for that, okay? Watch out for like believing in things and blindly believing in it, but at the same time, balance that with what is your heart telling you. You have moon and sun right here. It's the heart, this area right here, okay? Magnify that. Um, Speaking of magnify, where's Jupiter? Jupiter is in Taurus. Okay, then that would mean Venus. Nope, doesn't apply. Medically speaking, <laughs> um, Icarus, I discovered that it has something to do with the orbital frontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, DNA, especially inherited DNA, genetics, mutations, chromosomes. 
So I'm going to look into orbital frontal cortex. Decision making, cognitive process. Similar again back to um, back to Vesta. Similar. Right? So decision making, it's all about that part of your brain that has to do with making the right choices. And I just were, talked about that just a few seconds ago when I said you have to decide. Just because things might be unstable doesn't mean that it's going to be unstable. You don't believe something unless you you don't it was not gonna happen unless you put your belief into it. Right? When I say belief, it's not it's not up here. It's up here. Right? It's the greater magnetic field. Your heart will tell you more. If your heart is telling you this and you think you was like, oh I believe that, but your heart doesn't, or the opposite, I don't believe that, but your heart believes it, what the heart is what's gonna follow. Right? It's, it's gonna what's gonna happen is what your heart is saying. And it it's it's really ties into what I understand about Leo for myself. I have North Node in Leo and I've been following heart more and more and more and little you know, bits and pieces here. I invest a conjunct in the North, North Node as well. And it's Leo. It's really about I noticed that whenever something manifests, it's not because I was thinking it, it's because I was believing it. Or the vice versa. If I didn't believe it, then it's just like what happened? <laughs> so, um but anyways. Um, so really trust your heart and again but balance that with the information that comes through it doesn't mean ignore just purely intuition but you do get that it's, it's all connected right? 9 is the numerological number for that 9 is pretty high up there uh, I, I keep forgetting the numerological interpretations here um, because it's again in Aquarius, it still has to do with that stuff. It's um, what did he say about Aquarius? Yeah. Work with the crystals if you want to when it comes to decision making with amethyst. This is a good one as well. Aquamarine. I heard that aventurine does that. I have aventurine here somewhere. It's like a greenish, very green, like a soft green almost watery, not the more blue, but like grass green almost. Mm, but work with amber as well. It's confidence down here in solar plexus. Angelite, it's that, it gets you up, down, you know, connected. Blue celestite, blue obsidian, bogey stone, I don't know, the chrysoprase, I have never worked with that. Fluorite, ooh, that's a lot of emotions. It opens up, it opens up emotions apparently. Labradorite is very grounding. Magnetite, very grounding. Moonstone protects you from travels. Again, don't rely on the fact that it's going to do anything just because you, not only if you have to believe in it, but you put you have to put action into it, okay? Um, Antakamite, I don't know what that is. Um, it's associated with chaos theory. Oh, interesting. Didn't know that. We're talking about Aquarius, yeah. Okay, chaos theory. Okay, so embrace the chaos. Okay, I know it's not going to be good, but you think if you think it's not good, then it's not going to be good. But if you embrace it and work with what applies to you, go with that. All right. Mm. But we're talking about Icarus here. So Icarus actually works well with obsidian. It's very grounding. Rose quartz, clear quartz, black tourmaline, sodalite, lapidolite, shungite, hematite. It's very grounding stuff instead of like being all like risk takey. Right. Colors like maroon. That's a heavy one. Orange, red, salmon. Uh, to do with um, confidence, decision making. Those colors, yellow, amber, burgundy, gray, fuchsia. Work with those colors. Japanese cherry tree, if you don't have that there, maybe willow. Weeping willow. If you can find a weeping willow, go with that. Um, plants, morning glory, radish, inch plant. Okay. For leafy greens, I would say leafy greens. I'm not promoting this, but they say here eggs, salmon, 
Okay, but yeah, berries, nuts, seeds. Uh, it says here poultry, uh, cruciferous vegetables, shellfish, sweet potatoes. Oh, sweet potatoes are nice. Love those. So watch out for those things. Um, watch out for premature decisions, especially with agreements that you make. Mm, not to be negative here, <laughs> negative Nancy, um, but like plane crashes, drownings. Ignore those things because it's not going to be positive. You want to uplift your energy, right? But at the same time, be grounded in that upliftment. Okay. Unverified and authorized launches, agreements, those who are caught in crossfire. Okay, maybe child abuse might be part of this one. Is this still Icarus? Yeah. Okay. Inherited disease, inherited physiological, biological traits, heredity. Go with the heredity and go for what is going to help you. Just because I mentioned these things doesn't mean that you go for it and you, you get yourself affected. You have the choice. Decision making. You don't have to live in survival mode anymore. And you've been probably hearing this on TV, but you really got to make choices to, you know, really uplift that, elevate your energies, be more, not necessarily be more positive, but work with those negative energies and see how you can twist it by doing shadow work. You can say, what are the aspects of that that helps me, right? Instead of pointing at yourself and pointing at others, you look at both sides and say, what are the gifts with that thing I'm rejecting? Because that's what shadow work is. It's rejection of the part of ourselves that we don't want to see or what we don't want to be. So I would say mm, places you could go to your past, things of your past, things that remind you of your childhood, but also like um, um, the positive things about your childhood. It says here aerodynamic is probably included here, so something to do with planes as well. Probably also something to do with uh, yeah, planes, birds, okay. I'm going to put that here. Okay. If you like birds, go with that. Go for thing, things that sing like birds. Be around birds. Be around the, somewhere where there's air as well, which ties into this Aquarian thing as well. Planes ties into Aquarius as well, which is like high up there. If you like eagles, eagles is a representative of um, a symbolism used for Aquarian energy. So. Yeah, if you know someone who's an engineer, a pilot, okay, someone who works with children as well, go with that, okay. And someone who's into, if you like the science stuff, go with someone who's a biologist, geneticist as well. Some things to follow your heart. Again, listen to your heart when it's gonna, uh, I don't want to sing the song here. I don't know, copyright stuff. Mm -hmm. We also got Minerva. Minerva, Minerva, da, 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 da. creative intelligence. All right, okay. Minerva's there, conjunct Uranus. So, it's about justice law. It's it's Palestina basically, but in the Roman way. Okay, <laughs> being civilized, decency. Um, how she's different from Palestina is more like detaching from feelings. Watch out for this one. Detaching from feelings that are negative, that are not helpful. You want to detach from them by not resisting them, but by like rising above and just sitting with it, making space for it. Right? Try not to forsake emotions just for the sake of logic. Okay, this is what it is. So, um, numerical, numerological number here three. You need to do a three and also eight. Okay, why did I put mineral there? <laughs> it was under mineral. <laughs> I don't know what mineral is for Minerva. Not yet, I don't know yet. But something to do with that. Uh, so choices that you have to make. Again, still making choices. Reintegration of past mistakes and egoic choices. That's part of that as well. Shadow work. Yeah. Okay. So working with the... Don't always be so like, oh, I just because I know this, I can do this. You know, like, I mean, 
you'll know the feeling between like for me I'm like going through that I, I, I sometimes question whether my is this coming from ego or is this coming from heart because technically the ego can come from heart you can have a healthier ego by embracing heart passion guidance it's all it's all connected okay? it does work with the left side of the brain so in this case you want to work with the right side of the brain when it comes to Uranus here, conjunct Minerva, you want to work with the right side of the brain. But also acknowledge that the left side has its purpose. Right? Frontal lobe, cerebrum, I think that's frontal area right here. Not really sure. Um, so, and also, I don't know, work with, oh, owls ties in here, ties in with the birds, with Icarus. Owls, if you like owls, if you like snakes, great. If you're a Harry Potter fan, great. You know, um, witchcraft, owls, messages, if you like those things. Messages isn't really part of this one, but kind of. If you like olives, <laughs> olives, anything with olives, olive tree, athleticism, going to sports, get into something active. And as it's in Taurus, something physically active with the land. So natural gifts and talents, so naturally could be farming, could be... Something between sports and farming. Something to something that's healthy sport that's like not too crazy, right? Something that is mm, what is it? I don't know, right? Um, I can think of because it's Taurus, like bull. No, don't use animals, <laughs> but like be be the bull yourself. <laughs> this is Taurus, right? Minerva's in Taurus right now, so it's like. Go with that. Go with, I don't know, make your own, be creative. Be your own bullfighter. Like, you know, <laughs> they're not going to imagine. Draw things that are related to bulls and animals that are like hooved animals. Whales are apparently related to that. So if you wanted to work with whales, great. Go with that. Right? Weaving is part of this one as well. Work with weaving. If you like weaving, if you like sewing, if you like things that connect, right? Anything to do with connection. And then so Uranus is there as well, so we work with things that are like um, different, innovative. So maybe innovative sort of weaving, not necessarily with traditional weaving. So it doesn't have to be that crazy. Okay? It's not necessarily traditional sport, but non-traditional sport, non-traditional um, owl sort of stuff. And if you like commerce, great, arts and crafts. Again, not, not necessarily traditional. So it ties in. So it's all, you get the point. Right? When you seem, when you, when you feel like it's going to be something that is going to ignite passion, some sort of interest, insight, it's very it's insightful, but also um, inspired. Go with that. It's also about rewards, but don't look for reward. Go for this, go for the heart. So that's what I see here. What else is there? Did I do it? Is that in there? No. No. Mm. Mm, more of those fixed stars. I don't know what those are. But something to do with again. Oh, again is is um square. Moon and sun will be square again. And so it'd be uh, it's um, Hadar. I know Hadar. So it's uh, traumatic experiences. You know you work with the trauma by sitting with the trauma, sitting with. It's going to remind you of the, the softness inside. The reason why we have trauma is because, one of the reasons, is because we, we, we weren't ready for how it changed our perspective when we, were, when we experienced that trauma. We weren't ready for it. But it doesn't mean that you're going to be ready for things. It just means that embrace the chaos. Right? It is chaos theory. Aquarius is chaos theory. So... Work with that chaotic energy by sitting with it. Really sit with it. This is a time to sit with it. And it's it's hard sometimes because you your body wants to resist your body. The physical 
but especially the ego wants to go, it's not comfortable, it's not comfortable. That's okay. Forgive yourself, have compassion with yourself, go with it. Not saying, I'm not saying like give up, give over. So anyways, now it's time to do the chart, the cards. Let's see what it is. I'm gonna shuffle the cards a little bit. This is my first time doing like <laughs> tarot stuff on, um, okay. I'm not very good at shuffling either, but that's okay. It's part of the process. Okay, you can hear the cards going click, 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 okay. Needs practice. Okay, let me take off this cloth here for a second. Okay. How did the other people do this? Like they're used to. Okay, it is this practice. There's different ways of shuffling, but you know. Okay, spit the deck. Yay! <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm going to look into my book before I open it. I want to do a specific, uh, what do you call that? Um, deck, uh, not deck, what do you call that? What is it called? A spread. Okay, I'm going to do card for the day. It's very simple. One, two, three. Let's shuffle this again and see where it goes. All right. For those who get impatient, sorry. That one came out. One, two, that one came out. Okay, this one wants to come out. No. Nope. Okay, that one came out. I like that whole like intuitive feel to it. Okay. So, that aside, one, two, three. So the first one is probably going to be about, I'm just gonna interpret it for now. Ah, this one I remember is five of swords. You can see that. Oh, I'm just gonna change the camera here. Five of swords, okay. Two. The moon. Oh. Uh, what is this? Ten of. Ten of swords, but it was inverted. But apparently, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But it can be interpreted that way. So I'm going to leave it inverted. Five of swords. This one I remember this feeling like, based on the picture, you know when you do it intuitively, that's how you start. I mean, I'm still new to tarot. So it's something to do with, um, like responsibility, and something to do with, You know, taking taking things like doing servitude, but like carrying other people's burdens. Did you see how this the, the you this guy's picking up their swords, so they keep picking up their their their, uh, their burdens for them, or they're doing the work for them, or it feels like that's what it, that's what it felt like for me. But for you guys, it could be something related to that. The moon here 
it's sort of like a split. I notice that the moon here is, I was like, why are you howling at me, <laughs> right? So the dog and the dogs, and this is the dog, there's a dog here, there's a wolf. It's almost like one is domesticated, one is wild. There's a scorpion here, or rather, not a scorpion, it's a, it's a lobster. Being drawn to your soul, I suppose, because it is the moon, and making decision, making the gates right here. It's almost like crossroads. It's almost like entering your true self, your your identity, your spirit, your soul, and kind of figure out where your wilderness, your wildness, your wild side comes through. Like if it's how you know what that means for you, your own. What's that one? Your moon, your um, instinct. What is your instinct telling you? Do you hide in the waters? Do you yell? Do you release emotions? Do you uh, do you accept it or do you blame? Right. So I feel like that's what it's saying. And I'm going to go into the book after this one. This one is inverted, but if you see it, it's almost like you've done too much work. You've done too much. Um, really like it's just too much it's such a burden and you feel like you're because it's inverted it feels like oh um, the world is forcing you to be a certain way just holding you in this case holding you up but it feels like it's holding you down if we, we put it back this way it's like that right it feels like it's gonna kill you if you listen to what the world is. ties in with today actually this one ties in specifically with today um, the moon also ties in with the decision making and also finding yourself, uh, your spirit from the heart. And this one is a servitude stuff, ties in with the Vesta. Love it when things come through. So now it's time to kind of confirm it. Five, this is what I've been doing, five of swords. Look at the key phrases, no win situation, thinking of yourself and no one else. Winning the battle, feeling defeated, dishonorable behavior, experiencing hostility. Mm, okay, so even though it feels like you don't want to help others, you don't want to be of service to them, it's there has to be a reason behind it because you are not thinking about yourself, you're not processing it. Therefore, it is you're, you're resenting it. It ties in with the Icarus stuff, resentment, right? This is like when you're not shining and you're not embracing your true self, you're not embracing your what your heart says, what your soul says as well, your moon. Not just this moon, but like the sun-moon conjunction. It means that it's like we're not honoring the path that we're in. Okay? Let's go to the moon here. The moon is tricky love affair, blind to the truth, unrealistic dreams, feeling confused, feeling worried, and apprehensive, trusting your intuition, losing touch with reality. That ties in with Vesta and Minerva, right? And using uh, Uranus as well, tying into like what is real, what makes, what is real but at the same time. So what is real in terms of what works for you and what is real with what your intuition is? It's both. You know, as Eckhart says, it's the horizontal with the vertical. So we have to work with both. You can't just be logic, you can't be just all left brain. You can't all be right brain either. It's both. That's why we have both. <laughs> you have to work with both. So this is what it is. It feels like the right brain, left brain thing, which ties in with the sun, which is the eye, seeing things, right? When comes medically speaking, right eye, this is female, this is male, or I think one or the other. I don't know. The point is balance. It comes back to balance. What is it? Feeling confused. Yeah. Absolutely, the instability, you're in which community you go into, who do you trust, and all that. It's still, it's, again, it's touched, it goes back into the Hadar fixed stars, reminding you it's a square to sun, moon. And with uh, Castor there, it's, it's that imbalance sort of feel again. Makes total sense. And then we have Ten of Swords. Exaggerated self-pity, feeling life is against you, playing the victim, cutting through illusions. Yep, got it. So exaggerated self-pity, okay, feeling life is against you, playing the victim. Yeah, times it ties into what Icarus is saying. Victimhood, you feel like you're you're victimizing yourself, okay? 
So, um, yeah. So with the with the spread, sorry, I didn't really look into this one. First is the card of the day. One is okay. So, so this will be your strength. Notice this will be card of the day. The important aspects of the day. So watch out for the. Um, this was yesterday as well, but I would say this applies to the whole new moon as well. This will be. Um, sorry, card of the day. So this will be your focus for today or the first few days. Okay, and really like not focusing too much on yourself, basically. Attend to this. This is a personal issue that you have to attend to making decisions. When you're feeling indecisive about it, your emotions, make the choice. You'll know, you won't go wrong because you learn from it. Eckhart says that when you make a choice, even if it goes wrong, you still learn from it. We're in this 3D world to learn. We're in Earth, Earth school, right? What to look out for? Feeling desire reaction to rise. So if there's an imbalance between service and, in this case, if there's an imbalance between service and, um, you know, because service that's gone wrong is self-service. You know, same way where when um, childlikeness or the heart and following your intuition that's gone wrong is paranoia, <laughs> basically, because you're over intuitive, you're over intuiting things. You're kind of like, and so. Again, there's that stuff. So this, the fixed star of Hadar is showing us also that it's like, you need to work, we need to work with the trauma. You need to work with the trauma and sitting with it. Finding time for solitude, but at the same time, not too much. And really kind of like, you know, if it comes to you and welcome it and see what, see what happens. Now for some of us, there's still the fear of like being in contact with others with the post pandemic stuff. That's totally fine. I totally get it. I do. And so that's okay. Take your time with it. But don't be stuck in a rut at the moon. Don't be stuck in a rut. Make decisions because you'll learn from it either way. This is all temporary. This is all impermanent. Embrace the chaos. Embrace the impermanence. Embrace the unknown. And sit with it. Embrace the trauma. It's just a body. It is just a shell. Okay. So I hope that was helpful. And I think that was fun because I had to, I got to put some tarot into it. I got to add some medical astrology into it. And we're going back into like, you know, we're talking about gassiness. It's like, I thought that was fun. So <laughs> as long as it's fun for you guys, yeah, then that's great. Um, look into the videos I posted about working with the Uranian energy. I think I might post a one on solar energy, meaning like the moon and the energies of sol the moon and the sun. So we'll see where that goes. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Listen to your heart. Mm -hmm.